Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully, and today I want to talk about how to be an affiliate marketer for artists, but I'm going to give the example of my beautiful daughter and her boyfriend, Kevin. Um, Kevin does all kinds of cool things under the brand Customs by Kev. He makes camo phone cases, and he does commissioned artwork, and he does... Um, all kinds of painting. He does airbrushing. He makes things like these airbrush tennis shoes that are super cool. And so I, um, that's his airbrush gun. We'll talk about that in a minute. So I wanted to talk to Kevin and to you about as an artist, how you can make money with affiliate marketing. So I'm an artist and I make money with affiliate marketing. I want to show you how. So I wrote this blog post. I was making um, some cool letters for a project, but I was using my Cricut Joy machine, okay? So I wrote a blog post, cutting mixed media papers on the Cricut Joy machine. It wasn't like about that piece of artwork, but it was about how I did a process in my artwork, right? And a tool I used. So that Cricut Joy machine costs like $169, but... If somebody buys it through my affiliate link, so if you come down here, boop, 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 there's my affiliate link to those Joy products, right? But what if you don't have a blog? You can make YouTube videos. Um, so here is how to cut mixed media paper with the Cricut Joy. And if you go to the show more, I have links to those same things. Now, I did forget to put this up. There's a gal on my Facebook named Vicki Booten. She's very cool. She's a national artist. She works for a bunch of different companies as a rep or as a, as a featured artist. Love her. She does amazing Friday Night Lives where she shows how to use her products, paper houses, um, how to make a wreath. She shows she's adorable by the way. Um, and then she puts affiliate links underneath the projects and the gals in this group love Vicky. And so they love buying through her affiliate links. So how do you get those affiliate links, right? So you can join the first one you want to join is the Amazon associates program. And that means you can sell absolutely anything on Amazon. So if I go to Amazon and I look up an airbrush gun, like Kevin sells, or like uh, like Kevin uses, right? There are a ton of things he can sell, and this is sort of like the one that we saw. So he could, if we if we pick this one, and we said get a link. There's a little bar you can put up here. Don't get freaked out about the tools. Think about the concept, because the tools and how to do all this stuff is five miles away. You need to start thinking about what kind of concept. I'm going to get that link. I'm going to put it in my blog post or in my video or wherever. So I wanted to show you this. I love ShareASale. ShareASale is a company that aggregates different companies so that you can get all different kinds of links. So I have Cricut. I just applied to scrapbook.com. I belong to joggles.com, which is this really cool little website. Um, so I'm helping support a small business. You can do, um, I thought of another one that was a big one that's on there. But anyways, uh, oh, Dick Blick is on Share a Sale. So if you're an artist and you use artist supplies, between Dick Blick and scrapbook.com, you could probably get almost anything you need. But the reason why you want to do this is Amazon's affiliate program, while it's great, you make about 3% from any sale. And that's even if you, if they buy a, you know, washcloths or anything else with your order, you get credit for that sale for 24 hours. But the nice thing about share a sale is that you can get, like for Cricut, my commission rate is 8% and my click lasts longer than 24 hours, right? And each of the different ones, so this is Tailwind, 
I sold a monthly subscription. I got 225. This is Creative Live. I sent them to a free video. I got zero commission, but if they purchase something later, they're tagged as my person, right? So uh, share a sales amazing. I love them. I will include a link to them to sign up in this video. If you sign up with my link, you get to um, help me, right? Um, so I was talking in the blog post I wrote, I'll put a link to that down below too, but um, about the buyer's journey. So I wanted to real quick talk about what kind of products as an artist you would maybe pick to promote and how you can use the buyer's journey to kind of figure out how to make videos, right? So if Kevin was to make a video with his really cool tennis shoes, he's way cooler than I will ever think of being, um, and he were to make a video that was how to paint tennis shoes with an airbrush tool. Don't say gun, because if you say gun, then you could possibly get demonetized, right? Um, they could possibly not promote your stuff. So you want to say airbrush tool, trigger airbrush, whatever. Um, so if he did how to paint tennis shoes with an airbrush, that's way early in the buyer's journey. That's somebody who woke up today, saw their white tennis shoes and said, hey, I wonder if I could airbrush these. So then if he were to say, because this is the exact tool he likes, the Neo blah, blah, I wada. Um, if he were to say the... Uh, best airbrush tool that I use for painting tennis shoes, now best airbrush tool, is saying he's picked out the best one of several that he's used and he's recommending this one. The chances of somebody clicking his link go up with that, right? Because he's actually recommending a product that he believes in using. And I'm showing you the Amazon link, right? Now, if he were to say... Um, the Iwata Medea Neo Trigger Airbrush, then somebody doing a search for that on YouTube or doing a search for that on Google, Google is really late in the buyer's journey, right? They have done a lot of research. They know what tool they're going to buy. They just want to be reinforced that they're making a good decision. They could see Kevin's video and all of a sudden they purchase that. That is going to be a really good conversion. Now, should Kevin only try to sell airbrush tools and high-end things? No, he can talk about the different um, tennis shoes he does. Now, that's going to be a higher-priced one, too, but he can also talk about the paint that he uses in his airbrush. He can talk about the cardstock, the different kinds of cardstock he uses to make a template to spray through. So there's a lot of things that you do as an artist the, a lot of products that you use that you can promote. Now, for me, the way I do this is I sit down and I make a list of a hundred of the products that I use in my artwork. So for me, it's a Cricut, the Cricut mat, the Cricut uh, vinyl, um, dyes, inks, paper, brushes, um, magazines. I can sell magazine subscriptions using um, Amazon. So there's a million things you can do. Now, the other thing that I do is I would rather go to share a sale and promote Blick because, remember, I'm going to make 8% or somewhere in there on the, you know, somewhere between usually 8 and 12% if you're going through share a sale as opposed to using Amazon's affiliate. And we see that the Iwata spray tool is here between $82 and $391. So it is available other places than Google that you can get an affiliate link for. So hopefully that helps figuring out how to be an artist and do affiliate marketing. Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully.